Guitarist Louis Shelton, famous from The Wrecking Crew, who worked on so many songs. My favorite was always Last Train to Clarksville, the iconic guitar. Hello, Lionel Richie, Up Where We Belong with Joe Cocker, Jennifer Warrens. But he worked with everyone, Neil Diamond, Barbara Streisand. But he said something interesting in the interview, that when you're making the hit, sometimes you don't have time to look around. Yeah. And you had said before, you didn't really have time to sort of soak it in because it was on to the next and the next, because all of a sudden it just flowed, right? It started happening really quick. Uh, the way the, the session scene worked back then, uh, you had your your contractors who would call musicians for a session. As, uh, and for people that don't know, a session is a block of uh, three hours. That's the way the a musician's union can keep track of uh, how much you're doing uh, so that musicians, so they don't have you in there for five hours working on one song. It, they're paying you for three hours. And so you get as much done as you as you can in three hours. And if it goes over that, you, they have to pay you more money and all of that. But there was an answering service called Arlen's Answering Service. And that was the hub of all of the session work. Everybody that was putting a session together, if it was, say, for example, Neil Diamond wants to record next Thursday, his uh, someone from his office would call Arlen's answering service and say, we want to do a 10 a.m. Uh, session next Thursday. We want Louis Shelton, Hal Blaine, Joe Osborne, blah, blah, you know, whatever. So uh, Arlen's answering service would, would, would call all of those musicians to see if they were available. So I right away joined that answering service. And uh, of course, that was in the days when we had answering services and not mobile phones. So they, they would call and leave messages on our service. That, so that's how, we, that's how we would get the sessions. And so after la last train, to, I'd, have, I'd never had a call from Arlen's answering service, but after when, when I last train to Clarksville hit, I started getting all these phone calls for, for sessions. And I go, wow, <laughs> man, got two of them tomorrow and three of them the next day after that. And, and you know, I just started working with all of these great artists with, you know, in there with Hal Blaine and and the crew, man. And were you single was, then or were you married then? I was actually uh recently divorced. Yeah, I, I, uh, I, uh, the traveling musician had kind of ruined my first marriage, and and uh, I was actually in Las Vegas when when uh, you know, Voice and Heart came there and said we got the deal to do the monkeys, so would you come back to L.A. and and do it with us? So I was single at that time. Well, did you know Voice and Heart? Did you know them then? Did were you? Well, actually, uh, what happened was uh, when, when I first went out to L.A., uh, Glenn Campbell's ex-drummer and I, uh, uh, me and Glenn were in Albuquerque and Santa Fe together. And Glenn had a band and I had a band. And Glenn left for L.A. and his drummer joined my band. And so about two years later, me and his ex-drummer went out to L.A., and so his ex drummer somehow got got in with Boyce and Hart, and Boyce and Hart were writers for Screen Gems, but they were only doing demos. So there was a little a little studio called El Dorado Studios across from Capitol Records there on I guess that's Vine, and uh, so we were doing Boyce and Hart's demos, and. Um, so that's how I that's how I became acquainted with Boyce and Hart, and that's how they, uh, you know, uh, became acquainted with my my playing. So uh, when they got the deal to do the monkeys, they 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 uh, ended up in Las Vegas and on on one of our breaks and and, and asked me to come back to L.A. So um, yeah, I went back to L.A. and I was in I had this I had this 
a little studio apartment on Fountain Avenue, uh, just two blocks off Sunset Boulevard. And um, that's where I was when I started getting all, all those sessions. And then there was a beautiful French set of apartments just down the street. And um, I went over and put my name down, said, if you ever have a vacancy, I, uh, I'd love to have an apartment there. So I, I ended up getting an apartment there, a beautiful apartment. And uh, and that's that's when I met my present wife, who we've been married for over 50 years now. And we were there for the first year or so of our marriage. And then we bought our first home over in Los Feliz. And uh, you were doing good, though. I remember you had told one of the interviewers that, you know, you get two hundred dollars for uh, that clump of. But then you have three of them in the day. And, you know, some days you're making a thousand dollars. And I'm going, that's a lot of money back then. That really is. Yeah, yeah it is. Uh, it was the first time I could pay my bills and drive a decent car. And because, as you know, as uh, club musicians, you never, you know, you, they, back in those days, if you made one hundred and twenty five or one hundred and fifty dollars a week, that was the tops. So the session scene was the it's the best job in the world. You know, it's better than traveling with any famous singer and all that stuff because you're on the road. You're not getting paid as much. You're away from home. <clears throat> Where the secession scene, uh, you know, you're at home and and it's a decent life, you know. We'll have more from Louis Shelton coming up in the next few days. Make sure you comment on our video, subscribe to our channel, and share our videos. Remember, we have a podcast. Links are in the description. You can help the channel. There's also links there and a list of all our other channels. I'm John Bowden. This is Rock History Music. Mm -hmm.